On December 4th, 1969, big wave surfing was hit with what would become known as the greatest swell of the 20th century. A massive low pressure system metastasized into one colossal storm system that consumed the North Pacific Ocean Basin, resulting in the largest waves ever recorded. The supersized storm uprooted trees, dislodged boats onto Oahu's Cam Highway, and blew houses right off their foundations. Oahu's 13-mile stretch of stunning world-class surf breaks became a morass of turbulent six-story storm surf. The first light I was sitting at Waimea looking in disbelief at what I was seeing, that it was breaking so big that Waimea was just a, a full of white water. So I decided to go around Kaina Point and look at Macaw because that would be the last spot that would still uh, have some chance of holding up. Noel set off west to Makaha, the birthplace of modern big wave surfing, thinking the huge swells slamming into the North Shore would be tempered as they wrapped around the island's far western bend. On the drive west, he stopped briefly at Kaina Point to snap this picture, which Surfer Magazine later claimed was the largest wave ever photographed. When we got to Makaha, the cops were going around with their blare horns on their cars, telling people to evacuate the homes on the point. Makaha was the only big wave break on Oahu considered rideable, as Noel and a handful of daring surfers attempted the huge swells. As the morning progressed, the hundred-year swell surging out of the North Pacific was giving rise to bigger and bigger waves. Finally, everybody was out of the water. I was the only one left, and I was having a real hard time trying to gear myself for this thing, because I knew that basically it was a situation where your chances of surviving one of these waves was about 50-50. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, that we're giving up the farm for a stupid wave, and I, I finally had to just paddle outside the lineup 100 yards and sit on my board with my head down, and kind of go into another gear. And the final decision was that I would never have forgiven myself if I'd allowed this day to go by with it a lot, at least trying for a wave. Noel turned and paddled for what was then considered the biggest wave ever attempted. No photographers were on hand to capture his wave. Not a single shot nor a single frame of footage exists. All that remains are the memories of the handful of surfers who were there that day to witness his momentous ride. Greg Knoll starts to paddle, and we're all in our cars just going, oh my god, look at this. He's starting to paddle into this thing. It's this huge, black, massive wall. And we watch him, and he takes off, stands up, and he's this little speck on this gigantic wall. And you're going, oh my god. And he drops in, and he looks like a little tiny cartoon figure. And he gets that Greg Knoll stance where he just gets into the thing, and he goes, I'm going. And he drops down, drops down, drops down. He gets to the bottom of the wave, and the whole thing's already starting to, to just co come over on top of him. And he just kind of like stepped off the rail. I mean, there was nowhere to go. That was it. The fact that he made the drop, got to the bottom of the wave, and it was like oblivion after that. The whole thing just. Along with the birth of my sons and my daughter, it was probably the most significant day of my life. Even though it wasn't photographed, and even though people have argued since then, well, how big really was it? It doesn't matter. In our imaginations, it just was huge. Because on that classic day of the biggest swell ever seen, he essentially rode alone. And he faced it when it came to him. And that's what every surfer does in their own life. Everyone can relate to that. 